In this video, I'll show you how to calculate the resistance of the base resistor depending on what you want to power with your transistor. For this circuit, I will connect the 5 volt pin from the Raspberry Pi to a red LED which has a voltage drop of 2 volts. This is connected to a resistor which will limit the amount of current flowing through the LED. To control the circuit, I will use an NPN transistor, namely an MPS2222A NPN transistor, which is similar to the well-known 2N2222 transistor. I will control a base using a GPIO pin, with its current limited by a sizable resistor. Finally, the emitter of the transistor will be attached to a ground pin. The first thing we need to do is calculate the resistance of the resistor next to the LED. Since the LED requires 2 volts, the resistor must have the remaining 3 volts across it. We only want 4 milliamps to pass through the LED, so we will also have 4 milliamps passing through the resistor. Using Ohm's law, this gives a required resistance of 750 ohms. Now we must decide how much current we need to apply to the base of the transistor to turn it on. To do this, we must consider the transistor's beta value. The transistor parameter beta is defined as the current in the collector divided by the current through the base. If we rearrange this equation, we have the current in the collector is equal to the current in the base times beta. For the MPS2222A transistor, beta is about 100, meaning that the current in the base can be about 100 times smaller than the required current in the collector. But let's be safe and check the transistor specifications. To find its documentation, simply type the part number of the transistor into your favorite search engine, and you will likely find a PDF file among the first results. This one looks good. The first page will show you the pin labeling, which will be helpful when wiring the circuit. What we want to read is the on characteristics, that is how the transistor will operate when it's switched on. Now I should note that HFE is the same as beta. Here the table lists the minimum values. IC is the collector current, and in our case the desired collector current is 4 milliamps. That means the worst possible case is that we have a beta of about 50. If we look further down, we see a graph showing how the beta value varies with collector current. 4 milliamps at room temperature actually results in an average beta value of over 150, but it's good to assume a low beta value, so I'll stick with beta equal to 50. Now that we know the beta value that we will use, we can calculate the required base current by rearranging the equation for beta. This gives us 0.00008 amps. The GPIO pin will provide 3.3 volts when it is powered on, though the transistor will use about 0.7 volts, meaning that the resistor will need to drop in total 2.6 volts. So to calculate the value of the resistor, we once again use Ohm's law, which gives us 32.5 thousand ohms. Now this calculation used the minimum beta value, but most likely the actual beta value will be three times greater, which seems to imply that the collector current will also be three times greater, in this case at 12 milliamps. Well, this won't happen as the collector current is dictated by the components in the collector. In other words, the maximum collector current is 12 milliamps, though it will never need to get that high. So by picking a low beta value, we have merely provided some margin of error for our calculations. Let's give this a quick test. Using the documentation, I found the collector, emitter, and base pins. The rest of the components were placed according to the schematic, though I used three 10 kilo ohm resistors in the place of one 33 kilo ohm resistor, and also a 680 ohm resistor in place of a 750 ohm resistor. Obviously, I need to go buy some more resistors. Now if I set the GPIO pin to high, the transistor will turn on and the LED will light. One last thing, you may be wondering if the placement of the load, in this case the LED and resistor, has an effect on the circuit. If we were using a switch, then the results would be identical, but transistors are more complicated as we are using multiple voltage sources. Using the excellent web software CircuitLab, I ran a simulation on both circuits. When the load was on the collector, the voltage drop was from 5 volts to 0.085 volts. We'll always have a slight drop in voltage across the transistor, though it will be pretty small, here less than a tenth of a volt. With the load on the emitter, the voltage drop was from 2.373 volts to 0 volts, clearly not what we had intended. So when we use NPN transistors, the load should be placed on the collector. 
Of course, the situation will be different when using PNP transistors, but we'll save that discussion for another video.